Okay, here we're going to look at a very important protein structure called hemoglobin. It's involved in our red blood cells and is vital to keep us alive to allow oxygen and carbon dioxide to be exchanged within our body. So hemoglobin first. Oxygen moves within the circulatory system, carry, piggybacked on the protein called hemoglobin. Because it's a protein, its shape is very important. Hemoglobin contains iron, which combines with oxygen in a reversible way. It's a good thing it's reversible because we want oxygen to bind and also be released from that. We also want hemoglobin to transport our carbon dioxide. So it gives you an idea of the chemical structure, Fe, that iron located in the center. And actually, if you compare this to um, chloroplast in plants, it actually has a very similar structure with uh, magnesium being in the center. So hemoglobin, each hemoglobin molecule can carry four oxygen atoms. The presence of oxygen turns hemoglobin a bright red. If it's not bound with oxygen, there'll still be a shade of red, but not quite that bright, vibrant red. We see the binding here of our oxygen um, molecules. We see one bound, we see the options for two being bound, for three being bound, and then for four. We see that same image kind of pictured here. Now, T state and R state, T stands for tense state, R stands for relaxed state. So kind of that relaxed state, that fully four oxygen molecules uh, being bound to that hemoglobin. Keep in mind, each red blood cell has multiple, um, many, many hemoglobin molecules, so that's what's allowing it to bind a lots of oxygen and transport that to cells that are actively respiring. Continuing on, when oxygen binds, it causes a conformational change in the proteins. So we can see here, here's our change, deoxygenated versus our oxygenated. You can see there's a change in shape here, non-planar versus planar, because this is a protein. Again, shape is very important. In addition, what can impact proteins? Well, heat is one. Also, pH is another factor that can affect that. And we see here a decrease in pH causes greater release of oxygen from hemoglobin. So pH of 7.4 to 7.2, you can see that shift, that noticeable shift in the effect of the saturation of the oxygen. This is why our blood is kept in a very tight pH range, because we want the protein hemoglobin to be able to function properly. Uh, Something in the news that you hear quite a bit is carbon monoxide. So I want to make sure I mention that. Carbon monoxide binds tighter to hemoglobin than oxygen, not allowing for these gases to be carried. So what's occurring? Let's look at this um, here. We're looking at our oxygen bound to hemoglobin, and here's our um, pressure of um, oxygen. We're noticing under normal um, hemoglobin, with no carbon monoxide bound, we can bind this much of our oxygen, you know, a high amount. As we start increasing our carbon monoxide, there's 20% carbon monoxide, 40%, 60%, we see this plateau occurring very early, not allowing us to carry potentially enough oxygen, which could either allow us, in a good case, to pass out or potentially die. Anemia, in that normal hemoglobin where you have this um, severe anemia, this is another way to kind of graphically represent that. So our, bl our blood and our body system may need this about this much oxygen, you can see how carbon monoxide can negatively impact that. What it does is it's kind of clogging up the binding sites, not allowing oxygen to give it anywhere to bind to and be carried by the red blood cell. Kind of found this a little humorous there, where we have hemoglobin with oxygen, and it tends to bind tighter to carbon monoxide, uh, and as a result, it'll kick out oxygen. So we kind of see that represented in kind of a funny way here, uh, but there is some supporting science, and if the graphs don't help you remember it, maybe this uh, will. Lastly, carbon dioxide poisoning, I feel I should mention. Symptoms of carbon dioxide poisoning are basically symptoms of low oxygen. However, carbon dioxide is a tasteless, odorless gas that we can't detect. Dizziness, headaches, um, impairment um, of our brain function, ultimately, you know, it could be a coma, uh, and muscle weakness, cramps, nausea, all these are examples of carbon monoxide poisoning, extremely deadly poisonous gas. Just for comparison, carbon dioxide, which is in your body right now, that's okay. It's the amount of the percentage that you may have. So one, three, five, or eight percent. Eight percent is extremely high and that can cause unconsciousness and tremors. Uh, one percent just could be drowsiness. Three percent because we reduced hearing, uh, increased heart rate and blood pressure. Your blood is trying to move and get rid of some of that carbon dioxide. 5% uh, could be shortness of breath, dizziness, confusion, headache, and 8% serious case, even dimmed sight. So keep in mind there's a difference between carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, with dioxide being a lot 
easier to have or a lot easier to recover from than monoxide that binds very tight to your hemoglobin molecules.